Hello and welcome to our next in the series of our webinar uh, series. We're here with Tony Walker from the University of Manchester. So uh, Tony worked for 15 years for the Royal Mail, firstly in direct marketing and then in new product development for electronic and hybrid mail systems and early internet services. He joined the University of Manchester in 2000 in a business development role for ICT and digital technology development. And then as an incubation manager on its high tech business activities, he's incubated many startups and high growth companies in ICT, media, electronics, advanced engineering and environmental technologies. Then he moved into the University Technology Transfer Office and focused on spin out and license creation, uh, providing support to dozens of researchers, entrepreneurs and companies through the commercialization pipeline from idea protection and management strategies, business planning, introductions to investors and the provision of world-class incubation facilities. Since 2019, he has worked in the Masood Enterprise Centre, focusing on student, staff and graduate entrepreneurship. But Tony, um, how would your parents describe what you do for a living? Um, probably, I mean, at first when I first got one of my roles, it was quite a funny story, was that I said I was in incubation um, and my dad had seen a picture in the paper of a local baby care incubation as in incubators for babies but <laughs> over time they obviously got to know what I did um, and I always used to say that uh, we were educating people to be more and they understood that because they um, they knew that we were providing support for staff, academics, graduates to actually help them to be more in terms of what their research excellence was, but taking that out into the wider world. Mm -hmm. So I think when you related that into where things they could see, healthcare improvements, lifestyle improvements, things like that, it makes it much more tangible for people to understand science in their world then mm. so that's why i had to do it was that was my challenge as, and i think it's become a common vernacular now that if you can't explain it to your nan or your gran or your mum then you you probably need to redo your pitch mm. so yeah i hope i got my pitch right anyway <laughs> You've been in lots of different roles in Manchester, um, involved in innovation in all its in all its forms. You've worked with loads of organisations and loads of types of startups, including startups from arts and humanities, such as In Place of War, um, which is a global organisation that uses creativity in places of conflict as a tool for positive change. Um, and you also previously worked at the post office. You've got degrees from within social sciences yourself. From your perspective of all of these myriad of opportunities and, and, and types of things, what do you think makes a successful business? And how do you think that social scientists can support business and encourage innovation? Yeah, I think what makes a successful business, I think, is that it provides a product or service that makes a difference for its customers or stakeholders. Mm. Um, but it does it in a way that's positive to its staff and it contributes back as well. It's not just a shareholder thing or a customer value thing, it's an everybody value thing. Um, so it, it's things that come in other ways other than just monetary. So staff well-being, socially conscious business, it supports communities. Um, and the, one of the businesses I worked with um, the Royal Mail was a business, I think, that emulated that. They were very technologically led. They were very innovative. They were world leading. There were governments around the world consulted with them on their service and their product. They're known for everything from stamps through to um, innovative delivery. But the core of that that everybody remembered was the postman and the postman bringing cards, news, et cetera, et cetera. And I think if you were gonna capture an essence of a business, you'd want to get that where people 
almost were sort of had empathy with the brand and a lot of the ones I've worked with over the privilege over the last 20 years in the university probably the ones that have been the most um, successful not necessarily in terms of monetary value or shareholder value have been the ones that really resonate with their communities and these have been in areas like in place of war which deals with poverty and conflict resolution things like suicide prevention strategies as well as technology that's really delivered a fantastic solution for clearing up nuclear waste or environmental improvement or on the social sciences engaging communities to be more empowered and take back their communities and change their communities so i think it's really about at the people level makes success okay and just thinking about the last 20 years that you've been involved in um in innovation at manchester um is there a business that you is there one business that you wish you were on the other side of that you wish you were part of or that you had um lots of people think that they sh they could have invested in apple back in the day <laughs> yeah yeah um i think it's been a privilege to work with all of them and i know that's a bit cliched but my my raison d'etre is always to have a lot of things going on and be working with a lot of people and helping a lot of people um ones that have been particularly good um as i say have, have probably been in you know some of the healthcare delivery ones um we did some excellent work at the university around helping people who have got really rare genetic diseases and almost live in um, their own bubble or ecosystem and one of those cures is potentially going to help them get better quality of life and uh, have more access to different places um, another one has been working with um, again with with healthcare but in a different form where we had the privilege of working with some pediatricians and speech and language therapists to develop a system that helps improve educational attainment for children with autism so these are often invisible things that whilst we haven't invested money we've invested time mm -hmm. and i think it's time and knowing you've done that which is one of the great things about working in innovation and entrepreneurship within a university setting and knowing that it's, it's not always been just about delivery of shareholder value, although that is important because um, we need financial systems, investment, et cetera, to make things happen. But we also need to think about the invisible, invisible currency as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you were thinking about um, the innovation system, what what do you think that you would want to change? If you if I could give you a magic wand and say, right, you can change one thing within the whole system, what would you change? I think what I probably would try to do is to stop some of the repeats. Um, we probably have a lot of banana skins out there that have been slipped on before and we don't seem to um, think about things in the longer term. I think if we had a longer term perspective like some of the um, Asian countries do and I think if they were synonymous with our national strategy for growth that would be much better rather than um sometimes what are quite short and directed programs which whilst they understand they are they have merit in themselves in driving innovation quicker better faster they perhaps always don't fit with a longer term agenda where we learn and we don't repeat issues so i think that would probably be it it would be a longer term view 
not just for our our benefit but for future benefit of, of other people and particularly younger people um thinking about younger people and early career researchers or phd students if you were one now or you're advising a phd student or a, an early career researcher now um what do you think are the really important things that you would want them to understand about engaging with business we know that early career researchers and phd students don't always engage with business and uh, particularly within social science um i think partly because um they don't quite know how to do so um but what tips would you give them um uh, to start to engage and to start to think about building their network and and um and thinking yeah. about engaging yeah i think i think for social science ecrs it's really important they understand that they are equivalent to stem and biomed and in certain areas they have more because they are looking at things uh, with wider implications beyond the numbers they're looking at society policy regulation and how alternative futures help our health and well-being so i think firstly they should take confidence in their position and role um, and even though of late perhaps these things have been a bit more subdued i think they are more timely now than ever i think that you need to know what makes you unique before you can carve a niche that is is about you and your expertise um so i think you need to be focused on what direction you want to take i think in your early days you should be uh, a multi-taker and a multitasker. You should be maybe doing more experiments or projects than perhaps you need to find what is going to be the real base and actually do some spread betting. Um, don't go too narrow too early because if that fails and you don't have your research results, it can be a big setback. So try and try and be a bit more um, careful um i think you need to be well known in your community and that's easier than ever now through social media and blogging and just at the moment difficult but conversations with colleagues and groups and um i think people have got great resources now that they perhaps aren't taking advantage of uh things like well obviously the abacus program but things like vitae as well mm -hmm. they provide some fantastic resources for development so i think people should get get ahead by just basically engaging with those um and then you should look for breaks i think i think there's always a chance for lucky breaks or serendipity and i always find that serendipity works when you're looking for an opportunity and you switched on to it the number of people we've had in our spin outs and startups that have grown through serendipitous moments is really really marked so you should be looking about how you could contribute to maybe conferences or papers or organizing something um look for fellowships as well although they're a bit more rare these days they're still available and i think you should be actively out there looking to shape your career and mold it um and like i say just just really opening yourself up to opportunities and experience because the more you the more you tune in your radar to your specific area the more clarity you get of what's required so i think that those would be my tips um for people now going into that world of uh you know get make sure you've got a really really good plan not just for your research but for your own talent management as well and what what are the gaps and how do you need to fill them and who can fill them for you i mean um actually just picking up on that kind of talent talent management as you know abacus is all about um trying to help PhD students and ECRs to engage with business and potentially to move into industry once their PhD is over, should that be something that they wish to choose. Um, 
and I suppose we're thinking a lot about how can how can we help support um, that activity both from an industry perspective and from the student perspective or the or the ECR perspective. Do you have any do you have any advice for our PhD students or for industry if they were looking at our um, PhD students from Manchester, Sheffield or Glasgow? Um, I think yeah, I think again I'd I'd bring it back to focusing on the clarity. So mm -hmm. what have you got that somebody else could benefit from? I think once you've got that currency, you can then start to look in the market for who might be interested. Um, and I think you've got to create a win-win. So mm -hmm. industry has got to create something that for the researcher is going to produce the outcomes they want and vice versa. The researcher has got to create something for the business or the SME or the industry that is going to be relevant to them. And I think this is this is the real key where the ability to create impact and outcomes comes in. And actually thinking beyond what your research outcome is and what it can then do. And I think for an early career researcher, that's critical because I think the time, the time immemorial virtual circle of good teaching, good research, and then innovating on it is, is always there. And if people, if you build your ecosystem around you and you bring companies in, particularly those that may be are looking for innovation because either they've stagnated maybe because of the age or they're looking for innovation because they need to make a pivot or a sideways move or an area of policy maybe that can uh, help jumpstart someone else's career or focus or justify what they're doing. That can all be additive for these women situations. Um, I think as well, you've got to pay it forward. You've got to start to think about putting something together that almost creates value for people before you gain value. Um, I think too often now people think that you, there's an expectation of um, you've got to get before you give, but if you look in nature, that's not, that doesn't work. You've got to plant the seed before you get a tree. You've got to plant, you know, you've, you've got to work with what's the natural world here. We can't, we can't pre-wire something mm. that's there. Um, and I think you've got to become, you've got to put yourself in that space. So if you're not confident, you maybe need to go on some development courses, like say back to Vita and people like that they're great and use use your networks and other people's networks use your PI's networks use your profs networks use your other postdocs networks and you know if if people buy into you and buy into your credibility and your idea then they're more than happy to recommend you on um, and, and as I say I think there's lots of tools out there and now you can reach people through social networking and Zoom and others that you could never reach before. Um, but I think you need to think carefully about who you want in your network and who might and how they might want you in your network. Um, and there are lots of tools out there. There's, there's things we've used recently called network thinking. And there's lots of other tools out there that I think people can sign up to that are fairly low cost, but massively advantageous in moving you forward. Thank you very much. Well, I suppose my one final quick question is, um, what do you, it's not a quick question, but um, I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, what do you wish the world at large knew about social science that they, you think they don't currently know? Oh, that's a good current question. I think if we I think we're probably here now because we ignored social science. 
And if we want to get out of this quickly, we should start to pay it more attention and we should pay even more attention if we don't want to be here again in, in recent times. Um, as I said, I think social science, if you like, is the tapestry that brings a lot of other things together. It's the arts and culture that makes things valuable beyond just money. It's helping understand the wider implications of when we do something so that we have an, we have an ethical consideration as well as a business consideration. It's, it's helping in people in skills development that they can contribute and put back into society. Um, and it, it's just all those things that make social sciences more relevant. You know, social sciences probably is the human science because it is social and we are socially, uh, socially geared you know, when we don't work socially, when we don't work in alignment, things go wrong very quickly. Um, so we, we probably need to get back to a bit more of a renaissance in that area. And I think now more than ever, that renaissance is a great time. And I think as well, if we, if we miss social sciences out of STEM, and engineering and biomed and other areas we miss the ability to add significant value to those as well so i think we need to bring back that more to the fore in those subject areas as well so it's a call for more social science more science i think we can all agree on that Thank you so much for your time and your expertise. Okay. And um, if anyone has any questions, please do get in touch with either Tony or myself and we can put you in touch.